Throughout the Roman Republic and Roman Empire, men and sometimes women would enter an amphitheatre to take part in a sport of fighting, usually to the death. They were called gladiators and they would put on a show for a roaring crowd, whether that was against a starving animal, a chariot or a veteran. It would have been just as gory as the media portrays and although much of the history and stories of gladiators has been lost in time, here are five who we know were outstanding in the arena and who showed enough skill and courage to be somewhat celebrities back in the day. As always, sit back and enjoy. Marcus Atilius Outside the Nakura Gate at Pompeii, there are a series of graffiti scenes recording the names of the Pompeian gladiators who fought in games at Nola. Most of these names are noted as a single, which indicated they were slaves. However, there is one gladiator who stands out, and his name is Marcus Atilius. His markings are unusual, as it indicates he was a free man, and free men didn't usually take to the arena and put their life or honour on the line. He is depicted with a long shield and short shin plates protecting his legs, making him a mermelo. Not a whole lot is known about him, and Marcus's reasoning for becoming a gladiator has been lost in time. But it would seem he may well have desperately needed the money, so put himself voluntarily in the gladiator amphitheater. The inscriptions further show that Atelius was a novice, and the Nola games were probably his first battle. However, despite this, he was matched with a veteran slave fighter called Hilarius, who was owned by Emperor Nero and who had won 13 previous fights. This was a contest Atelius would not have been expected to win, but in what must have been a huge upset, Atelius scored a thumping victory, which would have earned him an enormous amount of admiration and his first crown. The fight must have been entertaining and brutal as Hilarius was granted a reprieve by the crowd meaning his life was spared and he did not die at the hands of Atelius. This usually happened when both gladiators gave it their all. We know that after his first underdog win, Atelius's next opponent was fellow volunteer Lucius Racius Felix, another accomplished gladiator with 12 crowns to his name. Again, Atelius won and Felix was spared his life by the crowd for giving a good show. Not a whole lot more is known about this elusive gladiator, Perhaps he was an ex-soldier or a naturally gifted fighter, but how he went about his life or what happened to him does not seem to have been recorded. Flammer Syrian soldier Flammer is possibly the biggest star in the history of ancient gladiators. His career began when he was captured and thrown into battle against a powerful opponent with the expectations of a quick death. However, this skillful and powerful athlete survived the bout and went on to become one of the most feared gladiators of his time. He dominated his enemies using a small sword, a shield and armour on one half of his body. During Flammer's 13 year gladiator career, he fought an unprecedented 34 battles, winning 21, drawing 9 and losing just 4. Because of his bravery and ability to take on almost any opponent, Flammer was awarded the Rudis, a wooden sword that granted a gladiator his freedom. However, Flammer denied this privilege four times and continued to fight in the arena. All of Flammer's battles were fought at the Colosseum and his bouts attracted record crowds, earning him the respect of the emperors. He became so iconic that according to writings, his face was used on a Roman coin. At first glance, it would seem he simply loved to battle but during Roman times, the Syrians were of a lesser minority, often considered cowardly. Could it be that Flammer sacrificed himself and refused freedom to change the Romans' view on the Syrian people? Flammer died at the age of 30 in what would seem his 34th gladiator battle and was buried in Sicily. Priscus and Verus Priscus and Verus were both accomplished gladiators during the reign of emperors Vespasian and Titus in the late 1st century. However, it was when the pair were pitched against each other that their legendary status was born. It was on the first day of the games that celebrated the opening of the Flavian Amphitheatre and their fight was the highlight of the day. Both Priscus and Verus had no idea who their opponent was until they walked into the arena. 
It was thought that the two men were friends, and it would have been a shock to them when they realised they had to fight to the death. The pair fought an epic battle with just a shield and a sword. Halfway through the fight, Emperor Titus ordered the contest should continue without shields. Both men were injured and had dropped their swords and ended up fighting with their bare hands. With both men exhausted, bloodied and badly wounded, the fight was ended on the orders of the Emperor, and both men were declared victorious. Priscus and Verus were both presented with the Rudis and granted freedom. This is the only known time that two gladiators have fought and both have won. It's not known what later happened to them, but their fight is one of, if not the, most famous Roman gladiator battles ever recorded. Carpophorus In ancient Rome, there were many different types of gladiators, most of which involved combat with other male gladiators, as is the case with the previous mentioned. However, animals also had their place in the amphitheatres. Bestiari, as they were known, were people who would fight or hunt animals, in battles called Wenationes. There were two types of bestiari, damnatio ad bestias, which were criminals forced into the arena to fight hungry mammals as punishment, all of which usually died a horrific death, and would often try commit suicide before going into the arena. And then there were Wenatios, who were gladiators who fought animals for pay and fame. This type of fighting was one of the most dangerous professions in the world, with a ridiculously short life expectancy. Whether it was a Wenatio or a Damnatio ad bestias, according to records, the animals could be bears, leopards, bulls, panthers, rhinos, lions, and even elephants. And to give you an idea of how ferocious these animals could be, Roman politician Marcus Tullius Cicero wrote that one single lion had killed more than 200 people in the arena. But there was one man who not only trained the animals who would go on to fight, but who would also fight them, and no mammal could defeat him. His name was Carpophorus, and he was the most celebrated Bastari of all. Carpophorus was incredibly gifted in fights, and would regularly take on lions, bears, leopards and rhinos. He fought at the famed Flavian Amphitheater, and on one occasion, he delighted the crowd when he killed 20 different animals in a single day, supposedly with his bare hands. His performance at the Flavian with the stuff of legends, and he was a firm favourite with the spectators. The acclaimed Roman poet of the time, Marcus Valerius Martialis, whose poems provided a unique and accurate insight into Roman society, once said Carpophorus could have handled the Hydra, the Chimera, and the fire-eating bulls at the same time. He also compared Carpophorus's feet to that of the most famous hero of ancient times, and the most beloved Hercules. With that, whatever happened to the most famous animal gladiator in Rome is not known, as there doesn't seem to have been any record of what happened to Carpophorus, and whether he died of old age, or was eventually killed in the amphitheatre. Spartacus By far, the most well-known gladiator of all time is Spartacus, mainly because of the 1960s movie directed by Stanley Kubrick that was inspired by his life. But not a whole lot is known about Spartacus's early years, although it's believed he was a heavyweight Thracian soldier who was captured by the Romans and sold as a slave. He was bought by Lentulus Batiaitis, the owner of a gladiator school in Capua, who quickly recognised the skills Spartacus possessed and seen it as an opportunity to cash in on him as a potential gladiator. However, Spartacus had other ideas and in a desperate bid to be free, he helped to organise a rebellion, along with 70 other gladiators from Batiatus' school. Among the escapees was Supreme Gladiator Crixus. During the rebellion, Batiatus was murdered, and the gladiators, armed with makeshift weapons, fled to an area near Mount Vesuvius. En route, they freed many other slaves and amassed a formidable fighting force that was able to fend off Roman legions sent to recapture them on six occasions. However, in 71 BC, Roman general Marcus Licinius Crassus recruited 50,000 highly trained Roman soldiers to track down and defeat Spartacus, and his men and the army were finally trapped in southern Italy. Spartacus was killed, along with 6,000 of his men who were captured, crucified, and whose bodies were lined up on the side of the road from Capua to Rome. 
So that's five most famous and brutal gladiators throughout the Roman Empire and Republic. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one.